Okay, in regular marketing, the product is actually an item that you're trying to sell. So if you are marketing soda, your product is soda. But in health marketing, the product is usually a behavior. You are selling a behavior. You want people to do something differently. Here's an example of um, an item from a health marketing campaign done out of New York City trying to convince people to cut back on the soda. And the behavior they're trying to sell is right down there at the bottom. Go with water, seltzer, or low fat milk instead. That's their main product. One of the fun things about working on a health marketing campaign is getting to think of what kind of products would help achieve that main product. And you get to actually create them and distribute them. So the main product of a health marketing campaign is the behavior but there will probably be supporting products that may actually be actual items that help them make that change. So for example, this is a campaign um, out of, I believe it was Portland. Uh, they were trying to increase the number of people that were shopping at farmer's markets. And one of the um, supporting products that they handed out were these tote bags reminding people to shop local. So this is a supporting product trying to convince them to shop at a farmer's market. Remember from our book that um, identity concept, if you can convince people that their identity is doing this new behavior, then they're more likely to do the behavior. So this supporting product is trying to move their identity to somebody who shops local. Okay, so let's do a little case study. Say um, you are working on a blood donation campaign. You're trying to increase blood donations. What do you think the main product would be? Remember, the main product is a main behavior. It's blood donations. <laughs> Don't be afraid of the simple answer. So the main product is to increase the number of people that are donating blood. Well, what are some possible supporting products we can do actually create that don't exist now that encourage people to donate blood? Well, we can give out little tchotchkes. And so um, these things, these cause bands are used for numerous different reasons. You could give these out at schools when you're doing um, a presentation on the importance of blood donation. And of course, what that does is reminds them, it kind of changes their identity, so to speak, of uh, I, I am a possible blood donor. I'm putting this on my wrist and so I am a blood donor. You can give out t-shirts that kind of promote the thing. You could, you could do those sort of products. Maybe you can go bigger and um, purchase a bus or rent a bus and wrap it in your message. Take the blood donation to the people rather than requiring the people to come to the blood donation. But look at what they did in Sweden. They created a product um, which didn't exist before, and it's a text. If you donate blood in Sweden, when your blood is used, you receive a text. To me, I'm like obsessed with this. I think it is such a brilliant idea, and it is part of a health marketing campaign. Somebody sat there and thought of this and said, you know what would inspire me to give blood is if I knew that it was gonna be used. And to get receive a text that says that your blood donation just saved a life, how powerful would that be? It would probably improve blood donations. So that brings me to the next point. First, people have to perceive they have a genuine problem. And so if you want them to do something differently, um, you need to convince them that they need to do this different thing. The health marketing campaign has to get people to feel that there's a problem in order to inspire them to do differently. I've got a, an example here of a, a social marketing campaign that is really just not that compelling. And so this campaign is trying to get people to save energy. And the way they're trying to do it is trying to convince people that if you save energy, you'll save money and you'll save your vacation. But it just is sort of blah. It's not really compelling. It's not really convincing me that there's a need to save energy with this particular campaign. Um, it doesn't convince me that I'll save enough money to have a vacation. It's just sort of blah. I don't consider it very well done. On the other spectrum of compelling, we have this campaign. Um, this was done in South Africa. And what they're trying to do is to increase food donations. But look how they are doing it. 
the product is increasing food donation, but the way they're trying to convince the consumer that there's a need is literally with hungry children at the bottom of their grocery chart. And so this is a, an amazingly compelling campaign. Um, this then also leads into what we're gonna talk about next, which is place. In place, you make the, the new behavior convenient. And so they're using the grocery store where people purchase food and they're partnering with that grocery store to allow people to donate food right there in the grocery store. So they've got the product, um, they've got the need right there with the children and then the consumers can purchase food and donate it right there. They don't have to go anywhere special. Um, all they have to do is pick up some extra food and leave it in the donation site. Here's another example of a health marketing campaign. This one was done in the southern part of the United States, and the product is to increase the number of African-American men who were checking their blood pressure. Um, as you probably know from your other classes, African-American men in particular are, have the highest rates of undiagnosed blood pressure. They experience it earlier in life and they aren't aware that they have it and it causes tremendous damage if it's not controlled. Um, the main product then is to get them to check that blood pressure regularly. What they did is they partnered with barber shops because in the Southern United States in particular, barber shops are still kind of a cultural um, icon for African-American men. They um, will go there frequently, but it's also a kind of a hangout, a place that they trust. They get to know their barbers. The barbers um, are able to give advice and able to kind of engage in conversation about various topics. And so the, um, the campaign partnered with barbers to give them talking points, but also supporting products were given out. So the barbers were taught to, to actually check blood pressure and to um, teach the men as they were cutting their hair, here's how to check your blood pressure. And we've got these machines that you can take home with you. And so the supporting products were the actual things that help the men to do what the campaign wants them to do. They were given blood pressure cups. There was also blood pressure machines that were placed strategically around the community. So in the barber shop itself, but also at things like movie theaters and shopping malls. And then there were promotional items given out um, such as posters and other reminders to remind the men to continuously check their blood pressure. So the, the campaign I just talked about in the, uh, with the high blood pressure campaign in Barber Shop, um, the product is checking high blood pressure, but this also bleeds into that second P of place. The place that they chose to really target was Barber Shops, and that's what made it unique and effective. Place then is where your product and also your message reaches your consumer. And so where you choose to reach out to the consumer can make it effective or maybe not so effective. So I've got an example of some free condoms here. If a campaign is pr um, promoting uh, safe sex activities and one of the products is giving out free condoms, um, the placement of this is critical. It would need to be in a place where people are willing to um, take in that message. So you wouldn't put this in a busy stairwell. They're not going to really read it. They're not gonna take the product because um, that's a little bit too public. But in a nurse's office, in a bathroom stall, people are much more willing to be receptive to this particular message. So your place then has to be in a, in a place that makes sense for the message. So just a couple examples for you to think through. Um, say you're doing a campaign aimed at um, helping employees to burn more calories by taking the stairs. And the main product is you wanna promote more stair use and less elevator use. Where would you put this message in particular that say this is a poster? Where do you want this poster? Well, one place it absolutely has to be is in front of the elevators because we tend to um, forget. We might commit to taking the stairs, but then we get busy and we go back to our autopilot and we stand there at the elevator, waiting for the elevator, but not really thinking about it. But this message then needs to kind of smack them in the face. They see it when they're waiting for the elevator and they say, oh yeah, I meant to take the stairs. I'm gonna take the stairs. 
So that placement would be critical. Um, similarly, if you're doing a hand washing campaign and you need to put these signs up about hand washing, where would you put it? It needs to go in the bathroom, yes, but it's probably kind of critical to put it close to the door so that people who forgot to wash their hands will see it right before they leave. And so you don't wanna tuck it into a corner of the bathroom where they're not gonna see it. You want it to kind of hit them in the face again to remind them of doing that behavior before it's too late. So the concept of price can be tricky to wrap your mind around when you're thinking of health marketing campaigns. Um, with When we're selling an actual product like a car, the price is pretty obvious. How much money is it and is it worth it? But in health marketing, the, the question isn't really about money. It's about what do you have to give up or what do you have to tolerate in order to do the new behavior. So sometimes the price to do something is time to do it. So if you're doing a campaign on exercise, well, exercise takes time. And if a person is not exercising, that's time that they were spending on other activities and you're wanting them to now spend it on exercise. Is it worth it or not to, to pay the price of time to do the activity? Um, here's an example, a picture of a gentleman that's smoking in a, a pub. Um, and if we want him to stop smoking, he's going to have to tolerate sitting in his favorite pub and not having a cigarette. This is part of his social um, outlet. It's part of his habit. He will have to tolerate sitting there and not doing the thing that he likes to do or that he enjoys doing. He's going to have to figure out what to do with his hands instead of having a cigarette. Um, he's going to have to tolerate withdrawing from nicotine if he's going to go without the cigarette. So all of these things are part of the price to pay in order to do the new behavior of not smoking. There are different ways to address the price. Uh, campaigns can try to convince the audience that the new change is worth it, or they can also try to shrink the price. And so, for example, this is an anti-smoking campaign that's trying to convince you that it's worth it, or you, the smoker, that it's worth it to not smoke. And you may have seen this on TV, and so it's kind of stressing the result of a lifetime of smoking, trying to convince you that it's very um, dangerous and it's better to quit now rather than to deal with these consequences. Or your campaign might try to shrink the price. And so this has been done in a number of different ways by cutting down the places that people can smoke. So back to the gentleman in the bar, um, one of the things that's been done in most cities is that smoking ordinances have been passed so that you can no longer smoke in that bar. So people were forced to change their habit because of laws that were changed. Whether that gentleman likes it or not, it's probably no longer allowed to sit there and smoke at his favorite bar. Um, this doesn't convince him it's worth it, it just shrinks the price. It's no longer convenient because it's not legal to sit there. So if he wants to have his cigarette and his drink, he's going to have to step outside to the smoking section and have his cigarette. So the hope with these ordinances is to um, kind of push people in the direction of not smoking because it makes it so inconvenient to smoke. A couple of other examples of convincing them it's worth it versus shrinking the price. This is a campaign designed to convince women that it's worth it to get a mammogram. Um, but part of the problem of getting a mammogram is having to take the time and travel to a facility to get the actual mammogram. So another way to attack this is to create a mobile unit. Um, and this is successful in particular in parts of the state, uh, this is an Arizona campaign, that takes the mobile mammography clinic to the towns um, where women really don't have access to a mammogram. And so it shrinks the price. It takes the clinic to the women. So it's shrinking that price where they don't really have to take the time to travel. Instead, they can just go to this mobile clinic and get it done. 
Another example of trying to convince them it, it's worth it, this is a campaign uh, to get people to wear their seatbelts. This is trying to show them that it's worth it. It's got a story of somebody whose life was saved because they were wearing a seatbelt, trying to convince you that it's worth it. But you can also try to shrink the change by creating laws. So we have seatbelt laws, and um, whether you want to wear a seatbelt or not, this might get you to do it because you don't want to pay the ticket if you get a ticket for not wearing your seatbelt. So you don't have to convince anybody that it's worth it. You just have to shrink the price um, by making it hurt more if you actually get caught with, without wearing your seatbelt. Promotion is a lot of fun. Um, if you think about promoting any kind of product, we can do those same things to promote behavior. So promotion is really the integrated use of advertising, public relation events, mass marketing. And the focus of promotion is to create a demand for your product and um, a sustainable demand. So you want to saturate the audience with your message in a number of different ways. Up above, I've got examples from a campaign called the FNV. Um, fruit and veggies campaign. This was done by the federal government and they partnered with a number of different celebrities. So you've got Jessica Alba up there, you've got Cam Newton up there, um, all of them kind of showing how they eat their fruits and veggies. And they had a number of different activities. Um, they had an, a very interactive website where you could see all of these celebrities. You could share their pictures on your social media. Um, they saturated the message in um, grocery stores. So you might go into the grocery store and see messaging from the campaign. Uh, for example, Beats by Jessica Alba right around the Beats section. Um, they've got social media channels. So here's a Twitter feed that they have talking about National Eat Your Veggies Day. They did um, activities, um, events, and it's all under this umbrella of promotion. So promotion is really any thing that a campaign does to promote the message. And so it can use media, it can be PSAs, which are public service announcements, which are typically commercials that they might play on TV or on the radio. It might also be paid TV spots, um, radio spots. There might be TV segments where um, the campaign sends out experts to do panels on the local news or like light news shows to demonstrate um, the new topic. There might be billboards or signs or posters put all over the place. There might be promotional giveaways. Um, certainly social media is used in a campaign promotion, um, and it might be as simple as hand out some brochures. Up on the top, I've got an example of some breastfeeding promotion campaign promotion events. And so you see there's a billboard that was taken out showing that uh, feeding your baby is normal, showing a woman that's outside, she's not hiding inside. Um, in the middle is a breastfeeding support item that they gave to clinics and so it's encouraging people to do um, social media posts holding up their little prop saying I support breastfeeding mums and then on the side is a sticker that is given out in certain campaigns to promote um, businesses to say this is a breastfeeding friendly friendly place this is promotion of uh, the behavior or the main product to increase the number of women who are breastfeeding um, allowing them to breastfeed in public.